What is going on guys? Craig1287 here and today I am bringing you uh, my review of Bandicam. Uh, Bandicam is the uh, the software that I use to record my uh, gameplay and anything of that sort and uh, not a lot of people know about it. I've gotten a lot of requests by uh, people, just comments and questions about Bandicam uh, because I do have that watermark, uh, so it's clear that I am using uh, uh, Bandicam's free version. And just like I said, a lot of people don't know about it. Everybody, well, most people are familiar with uh, Fraps, uh, DX Tori, Play Claw, uh, things of that sort, but not too familiar with Bandicam. So uh, here I am doing my little review about it. And uh, so, yeah, you can see here I've got the uh, little. Uh, Microsoft Word thing open up and I just kinda have a list of uh, perks cons and then the price comparison so let's go through perks um, again this is Bandicam free version I do not have the uh, the premium paid version so uh, with the free version you get to record up to 10 minutes per recording um, which is pretty nice Fraps um, the free version I think you get what 30 seconds um, and even then in the full version I think uh, videos are broken up into uh, bits and pieces so that kinda sucks this is just one giant 10 minute or however short you cut it chunk of footage um, as you record it auto compresses which is pretty nice that saves time you don't have to put it through uh, any extra additional software and uh, wait for that to happen uh, once this is done recording in 10 minutes it plops it out in a size that will upload onto YouTube or any other site real quick so it saves time and hard drive um, plus uh, solid state drive space uh, another perk is well clearly right now I am able to record my uh, desktop and non you know uh, actual DirectX or uh, OpenGL uh, programs uh, applications and things of that sort I'm able to record as a box and that's this little dealio up here I'll get more in depth with that in a bit uh, another perk is it doesn't use much hardware uh, resources. Currently, I have actually one hard drive. Um, I do have an external hard drive, but I only have one internal hard drive. So when I'm playing my games, I'm loading all the textures and everything from the same hard drive that I'm actually recording to. That is a horrible, horrible thing to do. Uh, that puts a lot of strain on your uh, hard drive or solid state drive. Um, and even then, my videos output at a pretty decent quality um, which kinda jumps into uh, number five also um, yeah the quality really is is pretty good um, I don't do any uh, things in Adobe After Effects or uh, Sony Vegas again I don't have access to those and um, so yeah I don't do any filters to make things look smoother this is it is recording and and playing off the same hard drive and that's the quality that you guys see so given that I'm using one hard drive to do all this uh, and it still looks as decent as it does uh, definitely um, you know is, is a good is a good note for uh, the old bandicam and then um, menus are simple and user friendly uh, I'll be going through that stuff in just a little bit alright so bandicam free version cons only 10 minutes means that you uh, you might miss some epic moments uh, there have been a lot of times when uh, I'm getting up to that 10 minute mark and just so much is going on and uh, the recording will actually stop and just I'll be so caught up in the action that I forget that it's recording or is has stopped recording um, or maybe I just you know I can't I can't take that time to hit uh, F8 is my key for recording I just don't have the time to do it and then later on I do forget so that that can suck a lot of, I've had a lot of moments like the, the very end of a battlefield game get cut short just because I completely forget I get caught up in the uh, intensity and then uh, you know kind of under that 1.5 uh, only one ding is played for finished recording and it's uh, when it hits that 10 minute mark for the very first time if I record five minutes stop it myself or record five minutes stop it myself then record and it goes to the full 10 minutes it stops itself and it'll make a ding noise and a little notification will pop up saying hey buy the premium version so you can record past 10 minutes uh, that I like that ding because it lets me know in game um, when it stops I can tell kind of sometimes when the frame rate comes back to a, a, a typical amount uh, you know being up in the way past a 50 mark but um, there are just times that I, I don't notice it um, maybe I'm inside and the frame rates real smooth even when recording and when it stops I don't notice the the transition of the frame rate so that that kind of sucks um, having 
something similar to what DX Tori has, where it, it actually shows the recording time, uh, that would be uh, really handy. I mean, if you get the, the premium version, you don't have to worry about this at all. This only applies to the free version. Um, of course, there's the watermark. You'll see it somewhere up here. I don't see it right now, but it'll be up in the top center. Uh, not a big deal. It doesn't cover up a lot of footage that happens within the, the user interfaces of, of any of the games that I play, but, um, but oh well. It's, that's kind of just personal opinion. I don't really care too much. Um, menu options can be limited. Uh, so, you know, one of the things of it being simple and user-friendly, well, that results in there being some limitations. To make something simple, you can't make it too customizable, uh, or else they just conflict with each other. So, but I'm not too big into, I'm not like an audiophile. I don't need things to be really, really super specific and stuff. So, so for me, this is not too big a deal. Uh, I like the fact that they are simple and user friendly. And so looking at prices, Bandicam, uh, to buy uh, one usable key uh, for one computer is $39, uh, Fraps 37 so Fraps is $2 cheaper, not that big a deal. Again, Bandicam auto compresses and puts everything in one giant file, um, I think that is pretty great. And Fraps can be uh, real hardcore on your um, hardware, you, I've seen people saying that their frame rate drops a ton uh, which that's that kinda sucks. Bandicam I don't receive as much of a drop as I would for Fraps. Uh, DX Tori uh, I have yet to actually try that out. I've had issues with it recording my stuff so one day I do hope for it to get um, proper. I think that uh, some of my uh, monitoring software like EVGA Precision I think that gets in the way but I've tried disabling them and restarting games and DX Tori doesn't work so uh, if you guys are DX Tori professionals help me out with that but it is a uh, it's 3600 yen uh, I believe that amounts to 44 US dollars uh, correct me if I'm wrong I will update this uh, video if that is uh, the wrong price but um, I believe it is $44 so DX Tori is the most expensive Bandicam is just two dollars more than perhaps really the the differences in price here uh, not that not that big so price don't let that come into play it should really come down to uh, quality uh, usability things of that sort features so let's get into the features here we have the uh, general tab pretty simple you got this is where my uh, videos are outputting to you can toggle uh, if you want it to always be on top I don't want it to always be on top I want the gameplay to be on top uh, I have no clue what autocomplete recording is because well I don't know. Um, I have it set to uh, do not auto complete recording. I really, I, I just don't know what that does, guys. <laughs> My bad. Um, then you got some uh, little information. This will be on whatever tab you're at. It shows, um, you know, this is how much, how big the file size is. So far, we've been recording for uh, eight minutes, and it is not even 100 megabytes. Obviously, if this were in a game, there would be a lot more data for this thing to uh, uh, keep up with. But since I'm just recording my desktop, you know, that's pretty pretty small file size out of my uh, total hard drive space and then you've got some options to pause the recording and just straight up stop the recording now to record the uh, uh, desktop versus uh, an actual application I use the uh, this part right here target you click on that use uh, DirectX OpenGL window if you are going to be recording a game and then if I'm just recording whatever triangle or the screen use this rectangle on screen option um, so yeah and that would be this right here, and we'll get to that in a little bit, though. Going to go through the rest of these tabs. Uh, file uh, for the uh, video, you can, uh, you know, change whether you want the cursor to be visible or not. I like it to be visible. Um, you can go in and customize some of the settings. This is where you control what sound gets inputted. Uh, this controls, you know, hearing the actual game sounds, uh, what you guys hear on TeamSpeak or Ventrilo or Skype or whatever that comes through. Uh, so definitely want to, you know, definitely want that to record and then also the uh, secondary sound device this is going to be my mic um, if you want to be able to hear that and then you can toggle this only record secondary device while pushing blank um, this I have it toggled off so that I don't have to hold down anything you're gonna hear me constantly um, I've gotten really used to doing that uh, since you since I've started recording I used to uh, just use the uh, push to talk but now I'm getting used to you guys always hearing what I say, and it keeps me a little tame. I don't get pissed off as much in my games because I know that it's going to come through in the recording, and I don't want to come off as a...
So, uh, just then, the, uh, the 10 minute mark actually popped up, and uh, yeah, so now we're in the next 10 minutes. Uh, back to this. Um, if you want to do this thing, you can, you know, set this to be your same push to talk button for TeamSpeak or uh, Ventrilo or whatever it is, and that way, you know, you can uh, talk to who's whatever. Use your imagination. You guys are pretty smart. You'll you'll get it. Uh, and then there's this option for logo. Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, I don't use it, uh, but if you have like a, a company or something and you do uh, reviews and, and make videos, you can have your company's logo anywhere located on the screen. And you can choose how uh, the uh, the opacity of it is, if you want it to be, you know, pretty faint or something like that. So that's a pretty cool feature for uh, companies and whatnot. I'm just me by myself, forever alone. So those are those uh, settings. And then here's the sound settings and the uh, the actual video's uh, resolution settings. So we'll take a look at this. I do record at, well, this is currently my screen is yeah, 1680 by 1050, but I am recording it at uh, 1280 by 720 because that is the 720p resolution for YouTube and I maintain that aspect ratio. I record at 30 frames because again, that's what YouTube caps it at. No really reason to record above that even though I can see in my frame rate, uh, my monitor's frame rate above that, really no point. MPEG-1, it's a standard codec for this one. Uh, I just use the default one. Quality, there is an option to go to 100. I don't really care because YouTube's gonna compress the crap out of these videos anyways, so there's really no reason. I don't really see a, a hit to the, to the my frame rate in game, but I just leave it at default 80. I do record in stereo so that you can hear the, uh, the left and the right. I don't know if that came through. That was probably real dumb. Uh, frequency, obviously, higher the better. Uh, codecs, there's plenty of codecs that you can download, but I just use the default uh, MPEG-1. And then bitrate, I believe that is the uh, bitrate that YouTube uh, has for the uh, 720 and 1080p versions. Uh, of course, 480 and all the lower ones are going to be a lower bit rate, but 720, uh, that's, uh, I believe, what uh, it is, so that's why I have it set to that. All right, moving on. Image, this is for taking screenshots. You can take screenshots using Bandicam. I don't. Anytime I use screenshots, I pretty much just use a Steam's screenshot function. And then here's the About, which you can read about, obviously, unregistered and you can uh, register, go to their homepage, frequently ask questions, all that good stuff. All right, so let's get to the actual, um, this thing right here, because a lot of people were wondering uh, how I did the uh, my, my commentary over footage. Um, that was, it was pretty tricky. So I'm gonna bring up a video, and uh, let's see, I'm going to find a video that is actually going to be uploading soon. Yeah, see, here's the file that's actually recording. Here's one that just did. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Where's the one? Well, holy crap, I've found it. Okay, here it is. Um, I open it, I and never here it is. Really it's playing right here. What am I supposed you can see to it going. And I leave it in the same spot on my screen each time so that when I bring up Bandicam, and I got this, so notice how it is right above the uh, Windows Media Player. Once you click on this, you can change your this, the uh, resolution of the rectangle that you're going to be recording with. And I choose the 1280 by 720. And bam! Puts this red box. Uh, well, actually, I guess now you can't see the red box. But um, let me get that out of the way. Minimize. Uh, so now it is the rectangle on my screen is perfectly fitted over fitted fit perfectly fit. I don't know over the uh, Windows Media what it will be displaying. So here you can see this stuff and uh, so I don't like to you know show that. I'll just use the uh, my keyboard's uh, commands to uh, play and uh, pause it. So I'll click inside here, move my mouse out of the way, wait for all that menu crap to go away and then I will Which play it. Run? And uh, for uh, purposes the of the actual videos when I did it, I will turn the sound all the way down to zero so that there's no conflicting sounds. You can just hear my commentating and not my uh, in-game commentary with everybody else and in-game sounds. So that is how I did that video uh, and I again had to position it over perfectly over the uh, Windows Media Player. Um, so for when this is up I can actually control the box and it's, uh, I can move it around on screen. It's a pretty cool thing. Let me uh, see, move it around, move it around, move it around. 
and that's how it works and when I want to record I just try to get it as close over that as I can so that the do bandycam www.bandycam.com matches up and yeah hopefully it comes out alright and here's just some footage of me playing and uh, yeah so that's how I did that um, pretty pretty ghetto I guess pretty low tech uh, I'm sure there's plenty of better methods out there but uh, that's that's how I made that one uh, until I get something better you know premium uh, that's that's my method for now so let me bring back Bandicam to its full screen and now it is at full screen you can see everything around here so yeah that is my little review of uh, Bandicam uh, overall I definitely would um, encourage you guys to check it out it is good its quality is pretty good its uh, features are pretty good the fact that it auto compresses is real handy um, real real handy the second I finish recording it I can just go through find the ones that I want uh, that I think are of quality and upload them directly to YouTube and with them only being a gig uh, about 1.4 gigabytes for 10 minute footage of uh, Battlefield 3 you know they upload with my internet in about 10 maybe 15 minutes at most so check this out I will have links uh, in this video description uh, to Bandicam's website uh, for you to download it try it out and uh, <laughs> I guess that's it. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, little uh, review of Bandicam and my uh, showing you how I ghetto commentate over videos. And uh, I hope you guys have a good one. Ta-ta.